All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as you heard in the uh, top of the hour news report, a funny thing happened to some NFL teams after they finished playing their games yesterday around the league. Uh, the DEA made surprise visits, some might call them raids, uh, to locker rooms and other facilities, including not far from where I sit, although it's across the river, when the Giants uh, finished uh, losing to the 49ers or the 49ers finished beating the Giants, uh, the DEA paid a visit to the 49ers locker room and facilities uh, at the Meadowlands Giant Stadium. Joining us now to talk about all this is George Vesey, legendary sports columnist for the New York Times, best-selling author. Um, eight, eight World Cups, my journey through the beauty and dark side of soccer. Is that one of the new ones, George? Oh, thanks for the plug. But you know that there's no such thing as drugs in soccer. It's, it's all in that <laughs> nasty American football. That's right. That's right. No, but anyway, uh, well, let's talk about this because this is kind of a kind of a big deal, I would imagine. Uh, and it's all they say, or some speculation is because of a lawsuit where players have, have have filed a suit saying that, or former players, you know, that they were fed drugs and they were forced to take them. And one guy said, "Wash it down with beer." So, so what happened yesterday? Well, they came in. The agents came in with with badges and paper to come in and inspect the, the kits of the medical staff to make sure that painkillers, to ascertain whether painkillers were being given out by, quote, unlicensed personnel. That is non-doctors, uh, trainers, any other team personnel giving them out before, during, after the game. And, and uh, you know, I guess uh, certainly that would be illegal, uh, but... Why do you, well, I mean, is it, is it because of the lawsuit that they picked this time and specific teams to, to go after as opposed to, you know, showing up at every, uh, every team's uh, locker room? Well, uh, let's, let's put it this way. First of all, I'm, I'm retired mostly, and I only know what I read in the papers. I think Will Rogers. Right, said that. right. But from what I read and from what I know about it and having covered sports a long time, Yes, there is a lawsuit, from what I read, and yes, the uh, it is it does get into the federal. If allegations are made, it does get into the DEA because that's their responsibility. It's really no different than if they heard that painkillers or other things were being used illegally by, you know, let's say uh, airplane pilots ready to take off or bus drivers or you know just a bunch of people hanging out in the back room in Appalachia or you know uptown or something that. It is within the purview of the DEA as, as government is constructed. Oh, sure. No, absolutely. I mean, you know, we, we've, we've been around locker rooms, uh, me not for a long time, but if you look at Major League Baseball, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's no secret that there used to be amphetamines. Some players say those amphetamines were just in a barrel like M&Ms, um, and, and players would take them regularly. That was illegal. And, of course, now, by the way, if you look at the uh, older players, um, once they hit like their mid thirties or, uh, uh, you know, upper thirties, they're really not performing the way a lot of them used to before the crackdown on all of this. So drugs and sports, I'm not advocating it. I'm not condoning it, but drugs and sports. I mean, this is nothing new, certainly. And, and I'm, I'm talking beyond steroids or growth, growth hormones. Well, I think, I think nothing new is fair enough. What's different is that probably because of the information about brain concussion, that that has become a preoccupation with athletes who are getting to be 40, 50, 60, and realize that they are severely damaged, and that the league didn't know, didn't tell them. I mean, who knows what the exact legal guilt is, but the, the league has already admitted that a certain percentage and has agreed to payments and so on. So if the league is saying, yeah, well, everybody should have done a better job, then you work backwards, and if there are other players who say, but what about the stuff that I was given when my knee was wobbly in a game and they sprayed my knee or gave me something so I wouldn't feel it, and then I really did blow out my knee because I played on it. I mean, that's one of the problems right. with painkillers is that you send somebody. Right. It's false courage. It's In the old days, it players the, took, the, a, the, the, right. they took a, a drink. They took a swig of, of booze before going in, probably still do, truth be known, probably far less harmful than some of the stuff that they're being given by club officials. 
Yeah, and we all remember North Dallas 40, Peter Gent. Right. I remember interviewing him in studio, played by Nick Nolte. That right. scenario, I don't think it's, I, I would like to think it's not like that anymore, but there's certainly got to be more sophisticated version of that in certain instances. And, you know, reality is it, it shouldn't be allowed to go on. Isn't that how the movie began? Is, is the Nick Nolte character waking up on like a Monday morning and reaching out to yep. his, his bed stand and getting all these things lined up? It's a little hazy, but... He's got all these pills, and he gobbles some, he drinks them down, whatever he does, yeah. and then he can at least stand out of bed. I mean, we all know, you've been around athletes, I've been around them all my life, to know that athletes are ruined in many ways by the time they get out of the sport. I hang out with a bunch of friends from Hofstra. Uh, uh, George, uh, you, you, couldn't be, George, you couldn't be more right. I'm up against the clock. Great to talk to you, as hey. always, sir. The book, Eight World Cups, My Journey Through the Beauty and Dark Side of Soccer. Totally unrelated, but check it out. Thank you, George Vesey. The panel is next.